What's going on, everybody? My name is Alex Wilson. I'm my co-host beside me, Anthony Rivada from Fireside Giants and Empire Sports Media Production. And you're listening to the Fireside Giants podcast. If you are a diehard Giants fan, you've come to the right place. Daily episodes, draft content, and so much more. Make sure to drop a like and a subscription below on YouTube. And don't forget to leave a comment. We love to engage with everybody. And everyone in the community loves to engage with each other. So I think it's a very nice situation we got going on here. But I am currently in Madrid, Anthony, in Jupiter, Florida. Not on Jupiter, in Florida. Don't get that mistaken. Um, definitely would be dead. Gaseous planet. But we're here to talk about the Giants today. Um, and I want to talk about three offensive linemen. The Giants signed an offensive tackle this week from the Atlanta Falcons. And I want to discuss him. You know, who is he? What does he bring to this team? And two other guys that I have in mind the Giants could look at in free agency and say, hey, you know, maybe we uh, spend a little bit more. Maybe we go co more cost efficient. But there's a lot of talent out there. Free agency starts on March 16th. A lot of interesting things coming up. A couple more dates for you to keep in mind. James Bradbury has a $2 million guaranteed boss, uh, roster bonus on next Wednesday, right? They have to make a decision before then on James Bradbury. Otherwise, they have to pay him guaranteed $2 million in addition. So, you know, that's something to keep aware of. Uh, you know, he, they're probably going to make a move early next week. So we'll, we'll be um, keeping you guys informed with anything that we do here. And then Dryley Dixon also has a roster bonus next Friday. So anything, or maybe even this Friday. So anything that happens there, we got you guys covered as always. Um, but the first guy I do want to talk about is Matt Gano coming from the Atlanta Falcons as they, they caught him trying to save some cash there. Um, before we dive into him and really realistically what he's bringing to this team, Anthony, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great over here, surviving the elements of Florida. Florida is getting really nasty. We're getting hail storms and mini tornadoes blowing through my college campus. It's a real fun time. But either way, I'm going to be here delivering all the New York Giants content, covering the James Bradbury trade trade situation going on because honestly you just mentioned that and got my wheels turning i think they need to trade him like very soon you're saying that there's basically a built-in deadline with his contract same thing with riley dixon i think we all know riley dixon is on the way out so we can almost guarantee that he's going to be cut james bradbury is a whole nother situation though because he's still a very talented player but he has a great trade market and he's a player that might not necessarily fit in the scheme especially at this price point but then we go ahead and we take a look at the number one need for the giants this offseason for the last offseason as well and the offseason before that it's the offensive line it's been years in the making. The Giants just have not been able to fix their offensive line. And finally, we're seeing Joe Shane do something about it, hopefully, right? He took a little chance here on Matt Gono. Matt Gono, Matt Gono. I'm not 100% sure the way that it's supposed to be pronounced, but he took a little chance here on a low-risk, high-upside offensive lineman. We saw Dave Gettleman take some of those chances as well, but not as frequently and not as early on in the process. I think that's the number one thing. Joe Shane stepped in here, and within the first month of having this job, he's already made a move like this. And I think that's important because with Dave Gettleman, he kind of place his emphasis on the offensive line down the road, right? He went into free agency, his first free agency, spent big money on Nate Solder. That was his major move. That was his first move on the offensive line. But I don't really remember him making all that many small moves along the way. So I like this little small move from Joe Shane. It's more of an indicator of what's to come, in my opinion, because I think that with Matt Gono, Gano, you're going to have to provide clarification to me, Alex, whichever way it's supposed to be pronounced. With this player in particular, I think this is important because at the very least, they found flexible depth. And when I say flexible, I mean versatile because – Matt Gono has played multiple positions on the offensive line. I've seen him start at least two positions and play all four of the other positions other than center. He's actually played all four in the NFL at one point or another. So I really like this signing. Very low risk, very high upside. It's a move that I think that Joe Shane needs to make in order to build some depth on this offensive line. And at the very least, it's good depth. But we talk about high upside. Maybe he could compete for starting reps. So I really like this signing, and I'm excited to see what this signing means for the future of this offseason, what the Giants plan to do along that offensive line. Right, and and when we're looking at what the Giants' strategy is right now, it is cost-efficient, guys who are you know being cut from other teams, maybe familiarity with the coaching staff. Uh, Matt Gano, I honestly don't know how to say this guy's name. I'm just going to go with Gano because I saw Graham Gano say on Twitter, this is going to be really confusing, so I'm going to say it's Gano. Um he's a serviceable player. Some people think he could be trying to compete for starting snaps next year at right tackle. So to give you an idea of his snap counts, he has nine total career snaps at left tackle, 72 at left guard, 36 at right guard, 232 at right tackle. So he's predominantly a right tackle. He missed the entire 2021 season with injury. Um, he's not a great pass blocker by most accounts. And 
excuse me, his run blocking is about average. So he's had a couple of decent games as a pass blocker, notably against Dallas week two in 2020. Um, I mean, that's really, that's really it. Another decent game against Tampa Bay playing a left tackle. We didn't only had six snaps. I mean, he's not going to be a guy that's going into the season and we're saying he's a bona fide starter. I'm still drafting Charles Cross, Ikema Konu, Evan Yell, best available, best option available. If, if uh, it comes to that, um, you know, I think that's still the way we go. I'm not, putting all my chips on on Matt Gano to be our starting right tackle by any means, but the giants do need depth. They do need guys who are going to compete. They do need guys who bring good, um, you know, kind of leadership in the locker room and good and good personalities. So I think that Matt Gano can offer that at the very least. However, giants still minus $7.6 million. Now, even more after this signing, there are two guys I have in mind. Um, for, for the Giants, and ultimately the first one is John Feliciano from the Buffalo Bills. John Feliciano is a really interesting player that I think would be a perfect fit for the Giants. Um, he's 30 years old, six foot four, 325 pounds, former fourth round pick um, from the Oakland Raiders back in the day. He was a really good pass blocker early in his career. He didn't play a ton of snaps all the time. Um, you know, he 100 snaps here, 50 snaps there. He really became a starting uh, level kind of guy with Buffalo. Did not really do that much stuff. Um, he didn't do that well in Buffalo. Was really a good, a decent run blocker. His pass blocking was lackluster. Could have been scheme related. Um, but early in his career, played predominantly at right tackle, a little bit of left guard, a little bit of center in 2019, 2020. But that's exactly what we're looking for. With Nick Gates' injury, who knows if he's going to be coming back at full strength? Nobody knows what Nick Gates is going to look like next season. We need a guy with value, a flexible offensive guard who can also play center. John Feliciano offers that. Um, the Buffalo Bills, I think, saved $3 million or something like that from cutting him. Um, he decided, you know, I'm not going to take a pay cut. I'm just going to go to the market. And the way I see this going now is the Giants offer him two years, $6 million with $2 million guaranteed. That's the contract I'm looking at right now as, as a potential suitable thing for the Giants. Super cheap. you got a guy who can learn the system. He can offer good depth at multiple positions. He could even start at right guard if you needed him to. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. John Feliciano, cost efficient, knows Brian Dable, knows Joe Shane, good locker room dude, veteran, well liked. I think it's a home run uh, signing for the Giants if they want to go that route. What do you think, Anthony? Yeah, you mentioned he knows Brian Dable, he knows Joe Shane. I'll give you somebody else that he knows right here. Feliciano has an extensive history with new Giants offensive line coach Bobby Johnson. They were together with the Raiders from 2015 through 2017 and reunited for the past three seasons in Buffalo. So if there's a number one reason, in my opinion, that John Feliciano will be signed by the Giants, it's not because of the connection to Joe Shane or anything. It's the connection to Bobby Johnson. They've already played to, or he's already coached Feliciano, Johnson has, on two different teams. Why not make it three? Right. They've been they've been working together for the past, you know, seven years. Right. Is that is 2015 through 2017 and then reunited through Buffalo. So for the last six years, they've been working together. So why not make it seven? You know, they're, they're comfortable together. Clearly, they have a good working relationship and like each other if they've been together for that long. So it would make a lot of sense to me if the Giants went ahead and signed John Feliciano because of that reason alone. The fact that he knows this offensive line coach and has a good working relationship with him. And sometimes that's what a new offensive line coach entering a new team needs. He needs a veteran that he's worked with before, that he's coached before, to join the roster, continue to work with him just in case they need a depth piece or a plug-in at a position. Or also, because John Feliciano knows his coaching style, it can help some of these younger guys get used to Bobby Johnson's coaching style, right? We talk about mentors at the quarterback position all the time. There's mentors at the offensive line position, defensive backs, you know, defensive line. All across this team, we could find some mentors, and this is one that makes sense. It's not like Antoine Bethea, where we didn't need Antoine Bethea. He was just an old man that was playing safety and being a mentor, a captain of the team, right? It's not like that. Because Feliciano actually has an opportunity to play as a starter. Like he could actually probably start on this offensive line because our offensive line is that bad. And he already has familiarity with the coach, which makes him a good mentor for any of the young guys. But also, even outside of that, the Giants need depth on their offensive line. I believe Joe Shane said there's something about four healthy offensive linemen on this roster right now. Or maybe it's five, four or five total healthy offensive linemen. That's not enough. You need going into preseason with a 90 man roster. You probably need at least eight to 12 healthy offensive linemen on your roster, not four or five. That is not enough. So Feliciano, if the Giants go ahead and sign him, we know he's healthy. We know that he's got a good relationship with Bobby Johnson, with Joe Shane and Brian Dable. Makes a lot of sense for the Giants to sign him on a very low key contract because he's not a great player by any means, but he's better than what the Giants have because the Giants don't have anything. So he's a good player that I think that the Giants should go ahead Take a chance on, hopefully bring him in to work alongside Bobby Johnson, get these guys up to speed. 
Yeah, absolutely. And look, middle of this podcast, this this week, guys, has been just off the rails. Baseball coming back today, um, trades, Carson Wentz coming back to the NFC East. It, why not throw another wrench into the monkey pit? Khalil Mack is now being traded to the Los Angeles Chargers. Do you see that? Wow. And you know what? I just saw Sec- that. Wow. A second round pick and a sixth round pick for next year. That's all it's that's all it took. Do you think Mack. about I mean, what the Bears gave up to get Khalil Mack and what they oh got back God. for Khalil Mack? Ryan wow. Pohl said, get this man off my team. Second <laughs> round pick and a sixth round pick. I mean, he's declining. Last year was not a great year. He was injured. You know, I mean, he could still be a tremendous player. Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, that's a problem. And Justin Herbert, Mike Williams is coming back. Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. Chargers are making a Super Bowl push next year. Char- yeah, better, Chargers might a, really be Super Bowl a, contenders. Oh, yeah. If I'm a sports better, I'm making those early odds right now on the freaking Chargers because that defense with Derwin James, I mean, they got they still have their first round pick. They're in a good spot. Very good spot. So hell. And they also have a decent offense. I mean, they didn't have a great offensive line, but they can spend uh, the first round pick on maybe a guy like Trevor Penning in the first round or maybe Kenyon Green later on. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of ways they can go. Zion Johnson at the guard, they, you know, they have. Some Let's not talent. forget they have Rashawn Slater. They I have mean, Rashawn Slater, was, too. You know, phenomenal I mean, dude, as a rookie. That team is good. The Chargers are oh, yeah, good. Chargers, they're building it the right way, man. Now they got Khalil Mack for a two and a six. God bless them. God bless them. This week's been awesome. I'm so freaking excited for sports. Um, saw Real Madrid yesterday beat the crap out of PSG. That was insane. It's been a hell of a week. But the Giants, we're far from good. We're, we're far from bad. We're so far down. We're, we're in the Mariana Trench looking up. There's nothing but darkness. There's all, all, all we see is that little fish with a little light over its head. You, you ever see that guy in Finding Nemo? Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That's what we see right now. It's the only light I see. Um, but I'm really excited to see where the Giants go in this draft. And, and the next player on the list, a little bit more expensive. This is the third offensive guard I have in mind. Roger Saffold, right? Roger Saffold from Tennessee Titans, Indianapolis, or rather, uh, Los, he actually was with Los Angeles. Um, and then Tennessee, he's a Pro Bowl level uh, guy, Pro level, Pro Bowl level left guard. He has a lot of experience at, at left tackle as well. He was a tremendous left tackle um, for most of his early careers, his early days in LA. Transitioned to left guard, and he's been just as good at left guard. Um, awesome, dude. I mean, this is this is the premier free agent. If you want to go after him, if you're the New York Giants, you're pushing the money the next season. And look, I know Joe Shane doesn't want to well, doesn't want to push money to other years, doesn't want to do all that. But if you are committed to Daniel Jones, you do what it takes to solve the offensive line now. I, I know, I know it's tough. If there's one guy, you know, if the Giants say we can afford to push one contract to next year because we can get rid of Logan Ryan's money. We can open up cap space. We can tr- we can cut Leonard Williams. If you there's guys to be cut if you want to open up money and if you want to do that, you can afford to sign one guy to push their contract to next season. Roger Saffold might be the one to do it. Pairing Andrew Thomas or Roger Saffold on the left side and then drafting a right tackle. You got maybe you have John Feliciano at right guard. You have Matt Gano as depth. Your center. Maybe you draft a guy in the mid rounds or you. Maybe you draft Tyler Linderbaum. Who knows? This that's an offensive line that promotes good quarterback play. That's my argument. Is it expensive? Yes. He's gonna he's gonna cost ten million dollars a year. That's a pretty penny for what the Giants are looking at right now. He's gonna be he's gonna be costly. But is it worth it? It might be. Anthony, what do you think? Yeah, I think Roger Saffold is one of those guys that's going to have a big market because he's a veteran and he's solid and he probably still has another three good years left in his career, right? He's 33. Offensive lineman can play up until 35, 38 even. You know, he probably has a few more good years left in him. So Roger Saffold being one of those players hits the market as a surprise. Now, there's other offensive linemen that are going to hit the market as a surprise. There's other offensive linemen that we already knew were going to hit the market, and they're not a surprise that we wanted the Giants to take a look at, right? Like uh, like in Tomlinson, you know? Um, what's his name? Josh Daniels from the Bears, right? Or uh, there's, there's a few guys out there that the Giants are going to have to take a look at. It's just how much money are they going to have available to spend on the offensive line, right? And Roger Saffold, is he worth the money considering how little money the Giants have? That's the main question because, yes, He's worth the money that he'll get because you know he's going to be solid, reliable. He's at least average to above. He's going to be an above average offensive lineman. In fact, he had a good year this year. If you go to Pro Football Focus, you search Roger Saffold. The first four weeks of the season is their quarter, right? The first quarter of the season, he made second team all pro for PFF on the first quarter of the season. They do it quarterly and then they do the final one. 
first quarter of the year, he was second team All-Pro. Roger Saffold, still a very good player, a phenomenal run blocker, and he was playing for a team that was very heavy in the run blocking scheme, right, with Derrick Henry as their starting running back. But for the Giants, is a great run blocker like Roger Saffold what they need, or is a better pass blocker like Josh Daniels what they need from the Chicago Bears? So that's ultimately what it's going to come down to, in my opinion, because now we're talking about the Giants and we're going to get into their offensive scheme. Every player that we want the Giants to sign, yeah, we might think that they're a great fit with the team, but let's take a look at how they fit into the scheme, right? Because, yes, the Giants might have a need at a certain position, but what about what does this position do in Brian Dable's offensive scheme? What is Brian Dable's plans for the left and right guard positions? Does he want someone athletic that can get out in front? Does he want someone that's great in a power gap running scheme? What does he want from that position? And how does Roger Saffold fit into those plans? That's the ultimate question that, that Brian Dable and Joe Shane are going to have to collaborate to answer and then decide who they want to sign here. But Roger Saffold, being a veteran with a few good years left, he's going to get good money. Because these veterans that have been stable throughout their career, they stay stable, right? You even look at Andrew Whitworth. Of course, he was elite throughout his career, but he stayed elite because it's the offensive line. It's stable. Offensive linemen, when they're good, they remain good for the most part. It's not like the quarterback position where they're good for a long time, and then they fall off at the end of their career, right? Offensive linemen usually retire on a good note. They're usually still very good, and then they retire. So, for Roger Saffold, being a veteran here, 33 years old, still playing at a high level, he's going to continue to play at a high level. All of the NFL teams that need offensive linemen know that. So he's going to have a big market. There's going to be a bidding war. And it's going to be very hard for the cap-strapped Giants to get their hat in the ring. So I would love Roger Sappel. I think he would be a great, great player for the Giants to gain because he is a good offensive lineman. And the Giants don't have many good offensive linemen. But it's going to be expensive. And that's something that the Giants are going to have to prepare for. So when we talk back and we circle back all the way around to the beginning, the first two minutes of this video, and we talk about James Bradbury and clearing up cap space by trading him or cutting Sterling Shepard or cutting this guy and that guy, the Giants need to create some cap space in order to fix this roster and sign guys like Roger Saffold. So that's the number one thing. First of all, Joe Shane needs to clear some cap space. Then he needs to evaluate the market and find some players at some positions of need. Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see what they do. Of course, the scheme fits the major point here, um, and like you said, the money is is, is going to be tough to come by. But if they want to see what Daniel Jones has got, they got to do something about the offensive line and, and reserve guys that are making low money and not and not probably not going to make a big impact. Is not going to put DJ in the best spot to win. But I will say this: good quarterbacks make everyone around them better. You can't have the best offensive line in football all the time. You can't be, you know, you got to be able to elevate the players around you. Daniel Jones has to be able to succeed to some degree without a great offensive line. You know, good quarterbacks do it too. Uh, I mean, look at Justin Herbert was an absolute stud last year and his offensive line was, was awful at some points. It was really, really injured. Um, so I think that, the, you know, Daniel Jones has got to show more. I think that's really what it comes down to. He's got to show more. If, the, if, we can get the, if we can get the offensive line to an average level, which would be a massive jump in in a uh, in production and efficiency. Um, we need DJ to to show us what he's got. Otherwise, it's time to move on in 2023. I think that's that's kind of the major point here, guys. But I'm really curious to see what you guys think about Macano. Let us know in the comment sections. Let us know what you guys think about John Feliciano or Roger Saffold. Who do you think we should go after? Um, of course, you know all these things kind of impact the draft, but not so much at the same time. Um, so I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to think. Make sure to drop your comments and like and subscribe below on YouTube as always. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants video. Thank you.